best people to network with in real estate. So we're going to go through some and they're going to be kind of obvious. You're going to say, yeah, I kind of figured you were going to talk about that person, but some are not going to be so obvious and they're going to be the big gems. So you're going to want to stay tuned till the very end of this. So you can get those gems and start putting those into play immediately. <laughs> In this episode, we're going to go through who are and how to network with the best people in real estate. At the end of this episode, you're going to know who the best people to network in real estate are. Obviously, other investors is an easy one, right? You want to be able to go out and network with other investors. This is key in being able to go out there, find out what's happening in the marketplace, who's doing deals, what deals are moving, what to look for, what areas, all of that. So other investors, kind of a key, no brainer. This is what we always talk about. Go out there, network, meet other real estate investors. So many real estate investors that I know, you know, have a tendency to be like big time where they, I always say, what's bigger, your ego or your bank account? Check that ego because it ain't making you any money and get with your bank account. Go network and make friends. That's what we do. You want to get out there, the bigger, what is it they say? The bigger the network, the bigger the net worth. And this is so true in real estate investing. It goes back to that book we talked about in the last episode. If you haven't listened to it, you want to. In the first book that we recommend, what was it? How to Win Friends and Influence People. Go out and check up that episode right here if you haven't. Let's just say I'm already in real estate investing. You want to try to level up to the next level. So what I often do, if I want to network and get to that next level, I'll find the people doing bigger deals. Like who's doing bigger commercial deals than I am. Those people are the people I want to start networking with and get to know what they're doing, how they're doing it and where they're doing it. This is all the key to kind of level up. You hear, you hear people talk about it all the time. You got to do it by getting out of your comfort zone. You also have to humble yourself and be able to go ask these people, how did you get started? Show sincere interest. And if you're, if you're that far, I'm sure you're showing sincere interest in it, but this isn't the time for you to talk about you. It's the time for you to ask questions and talk about them. By doing so, you're going to extract more information. People would love to share how they got their success is what I found. So ask them, how did you get started? What is it that you do that's unique? And what do you continue to do to get yourself to that next level? These are things that people will share with you. So networking, finding that next person or that how to level up essentially who's doing the next biggest thing above you. I like to network with title companies. Title companies could pull contacts for you. You could find out lists, find out what's going on, foreclosures, things like that. Also when dealing with title companies, you're going to be dealing with escrow companies often as well. So if you have a good escrow company, if you could become good friends with someone at the escrow company, you could find out which deals, great deals, have just fallen out of escrow and didn't close and you could capitalize on that. I would say finding someone at a title company is probably the key way for you to find some of the best deals because sometimes people just can't deliver. They can't close the deal. Maybe something happened. You name it. Those things do come up and that's where often I find phenomenal deals is when deals just fell out of escrow. I'm there the very next day to pick it up. I get to take advantage of where where they did the hard negotiating and what they did to get that deal. Sometimes I could do a little bit better than that because now the seller's all burnt out. Anyways, finding a good title company you could have a relationship with. That's somebody that should be on your list as a must. Utility people. Utility people have a tendency to what? Shut off utilities. If someone's out there shutting them off, maybe you have a friend or you could find in your network someone that goes around and does that for non-payment. That could be a great area for you to start. And it doesn't even mean like some, sometimes I hear people say, well, what if they're just a renter? Well, they could ju be just a renter, but let me just tell you, if they're not paying their utilities, they're probably not paying their landlord as well. Guess who could be discouraged as a landlord? That's right. That property owner, you could be catching him at a perfect time where he's disenchanted and just wants out. So what happens and why I say the utility companies, there's a, the, a person that actually goes out, out and shuts off the electricity, shuts off the water, whatever it might be. That person has a list that he goes through. I don't know the ethics behind it and if he's supposed to divulge this information, but I have worked out agreements with utility company people that go out and do that. And they will call me on a list 
um, that they have and share with me what they're seeing as far as some of the water turnoffs and things like that. That way I could contact them or the, the excuse me, I could contact the seller and see if the seller is interested in selling if they're under some sort of distress. I'm not saying that they always are, but to me, it's a sign that something's happening with that property, whether it's the renter or the, the homeowner himself, they're going through some sort of issue. Some other great people just to network with are gonna be your, your lenders. You wanna stay in contact with lenders. You wanna be able to you know, talk to them, see what's going on, you know, just because you're gonna need funding. So having a relationship with some of these people that fund deals seems like it makes sense, right? Same thing with title, escrow companies, traditional lenders, you name it. You want to have a relationship with probably all of them, right? So whether you're doing a refinance, a purchase, commercial, residential, private, hard money, you name it, having the more relationships in that space, the better because it keeps more options open for you so you're able to take down more deals. Hey, and talking about networking, you can network with me by making a comment below. We'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and respond to you. So let's go ahead, engage right now, make a comment below. Let me know your thoughts of this video or if there's anything else that you want us to do a video on about real estate and real estate investing. At the end here, I'm gonna go and give away one of my secrets of who I network with to find some of the biggest gems I've ever got. But until then, let's continue. Networking with contractors, making sure that I have a good relationship with not just a contractor, several contractors. It's important to have these relationships. Your business depends on it. You want to make sure like some of the things that I've done with networking and even having that relationship with my vendors or tradespeople is after I finish a house and we've sold it and had a successful win, I'll even throw a little party for everybody. They get to bring their family. It's a wonderful thing. You get to celebrate it all together. You get to talk about all the work that people have done and celebrate it. Anyways, in networking, this is something that helps solidify the relationship. It brings you guys that much closer. Keep in mind, like these people that you'll be working with, some of them you'll be working with for a long time, years and years and years to come. Obviously, real estate agent and brokers. This is an obvious one. I know you're, a lot of them submit your offers, but it's important to have these relationships with them and make sure that you're putting in solid offers and that you're able to close on these offers too. Do everything you possibly can to get the deal done. Their reputation depends on it too. So make sure that you have a good Rolodex of good residential real estate agents, brokers, and even commercial as well. Here's one that you might not have thought of, property management companies. I have several friends that own property management companies. What I ask them is like, hey, if you ever have someone that is discouraged or done being a landlord and you decide not to do the deal, please contact me. I'm ready to take down this deal. I could pay cash, whether I can or can't, make sure I have that relationship with my lender, right? So I, I get those relationships solidified. So in case there is something that hits their radar and someone does wanna sell and sell fast, that you are the first person that they think of when they go to sell. So again, networking with property management companies. So now I'm gonna tell you my gem, don't share it. Do not share this, this is between us. Okay, for years, I was so busy, I wasn't able to go out and necessarily go find the houses. So I depended on people bringing me the deals, and not just the deal that was shotgunned across everybody's phone or internet or email at that time, or some smoke signals, right? So listen, bankruptcy attorneys, Bankruptcy attorneys is an underutilized resource in buying houses. People are sometimes forced to leave their house and some equity on the table. You could pick these up and if you could close fast and you could get a good relationship with an, a bankruptcy attorney or two or five or 10, I would schedule meetings with bankruptcy attorneys often and go to them and explain to them what I'm able to do and how quick I could close. It is important, sometimes there's fees that can be paid to the bankruptcy attorney for that deal, which helps them close that case out and them get their fees. It's perfectly legal too. But anyways, having the relationship where you could deliver and things like this is so important. I would literally have bankruptcy attorneys sending me deals all the time and they automatically had that equity built into them as well. It's that area I've seen people be able to foster and grow a lot of wealth in a short period of time utilizing bankruptcy attorneys. It's something that you should look into as well. And remember, this is our secret.
Hey, if you found this information useful, you're gonna find this book more than useful. In this book, you're gonna learn how to find deals, how to fund deals. You're gonna hear more about my story. You're gonna talk about rehabbing, repositioning. There's lots of great content in this book. Check it out, it's yours for free, but once you get it for free, you gotta actually read it and then put it into action. Do it, check it out below. Let's get started today. Let's get serious about your financial future.